Hey everybody, Mr. Odom here, and I'm going to cover section 10.4, compound events. So you need your pencil, your composition book or notebook paper, and a calculator. And the learning target for this video is, I can use tree diagrams, tables, or a formula to find the number of possible outcomes. So we're looking for the PO. And I can find probabilities of compound events. So let's take a look at what we have here. First, we have a definition. So the set of all possible outcomes of one or more events. So now we're gonna talk about, hey, there's more stuff going on than just rolling one dice or flipping one coin, okay? What if we roll a dice and flip a coin? Okay, so what are all the possible outcomes when you do that? Okay, all those possible outcomes, which we will still call the PO, um, that set of possible outcomes is called the sample space. And you can use tables and tree diagrams to find a sample space of two or more events. So let's look at examples of that. So example one, you randomly choose a crust and style of pizza. Find the sample space. So when you see that, that's asking you to find the PO. What are all the possible outcomes when you choose a crust and a style? All right, so this is a tree diagram. And let's look at how this works. First, I list the crust. Could I have listed the style first? Yes, you could have. So you could, uh, for this one, they, we list the crust first. And then, so I pick a thin crust, then I could have a thin Hawaiian, a thin Mexican, a thin pepperoni, or a thin veggie pizza. Okay, so I match a crust with a style and I get an outcome. Okay, and these are four different types of thin crust pizzas I could get. If I decide, ah, I don't want a thin crust, I want a stuffed crust, I do the same thing. And here are the four different outcomes that I can get if I choose a stuffed crust pizza and one of the four different styles. So how many different pizzas are possible? Well, all I need to do is count how many outcomes are there, okay? And you can see here um, there are eight. There are eight different kinds of pizzas. And when I put a circle around, that is called the sample space. All of the possible outcomes. So let's look at a practice problem. What if the pizza shop adds a deep dish crust? Find the sample space. So what if the um, they say, hey, you know what? We need to add a deep dish crust to our to our crust here so i would add this up here then how many more different pizzas can i get so i actually drew this down here would basically want to cut this piece here and move it up so i already have eight different pizzas i can add four different more choices here I can have my deep dish Hawaiian, my deep dish Mexican, my deep dish pepperoni, or my deep dish veggie. That adds four more different outcomes to the eight outcomes I had before. So now how many outcomes are there? There are 12 possible outcomes. So my sample space has 12 different possible um, pizza combinations, all right? So next time you go to, uh, you know, Contos or go to, what's the other pizza place here, Papa Murphy's, um, and you look at the menu, think about all the different combinations of pizzas you could get. How big is that sample space? All right, so another way we can look at um, finding the total number of possible outcomes is to use the fundamental counting principle. And so this, the, the way this works is if you have an event M, like choosing a crust, and M has a certain number of outcomes, 
In our experiment above, choosing a crust, there were two possible outcomes. And then in event N, which could have been choosing a style of pizza, has N different possible outcomes. So above, if I look here, this could be our N and this could be our M. And so little n would be two and little m, which that looks like that, this should be capital M, little m is four, okay? So we can come back down here to this definition. All we do if we wanna figure out the total number of outcomes, so again, we're looking for the PO, is to just multiply those numbers together, all right? So let's look at this in an example. Oh, by the way, the fundamental counting principle, um, you can use this if you have more than two events, all right? So for our pizza problem, we could have, uh, we could have crust, we can have style, and maybe we can have sauce. We can have a white sauce, we can have a garlic sauce, we can have a red sauce, all right? So that just adds to the number of possible outcomes for the type of pizza we can get. All right, let's look at this example. Find the total number of possible outcomes of rolling a number cube and flipping a coin. So this is another way that we can display our data is in a table. And all I have to do is just count. 1H means I rolled a one, I got a heads. 4T means I rolled a four and I got a tails. And we just count. And that would give us 12 outcomes, all right? The fundamental counting principle says a, when you roll the dice, there's six outcomes. When you flip the coin, there's two outcomes. So the fundamental counting principle says multiply two times six and you get 12, all right? So it's a lot quicker. It's a lot easier to use. So I recommend using that fundamental counting principle whenever you can. So here's an example where the fundamental counting principle will save you a lot of time so you don't have to make a tree diagram or some, some sort of table. So how many different outfits can you make from the t-shirts, jeans, and shoes? So you got four choices for t-shirts, I'm sorry, <clears throat> for jeans. You have seven choices for t-shirts and you have three choices for shoes. All I have to do to figure out the number of possible outcomes is multiply those together and that tells me how many outfits that I have. Okay, and this is using the fundamental counting principle. Pretty straightforward. Here's another way I can use the fundamental counting principle. Find a total number of possible outcomes. There we go, we're looking for the PO of spinning the spinner and choosing a number from one to five. So choosing a number from one to five, there's five outcomes. Spinning the spinner, there's four outcomes. All right, so the total number of possible outcomes or the PO is 20. How many different outfits can you make from four t-shirts, five pairs of jeans, and five pairs of shoes? So I worked this one out too. So all you have to do is multiply four times five times five. All right, and that tells you how many outfits how many different possible outfits that you can make with this combination of jeans, shoes, and t-shirts. So a compound event, it consists of two or more events. As with a single event, the probability of a compound event is the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes or the foe to the number of possible outcomes. So we're still making a ratio. The probability of a compound event is still the pho divided by the po. All right, so let's say you flip three nickels. What's the probability of flipping two heads and one tail? So here notice we have a tree diagram. They come in handy sometimes, especially when you're flipping coins. And you wanna find the probability that you get two heads and one tail. 
So you look for that outcome. And I found three places where I see two heads and a tail. So that is, those are my favorable outcomes. And then the total number of outcomes, I look, I count them, there are eight of them. Okay, so that gives me a probability of three eighths or 37.5%. All right, so here are some examples for you to look, to look at, okay? In example two, what is the probability of rolling at most four and flipping heads? So remember for that example, um, your choices for rolling the dice were one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is for the dice. And then for the coin, you had two choices, heads or tails. So um, you can make a tree diagram or make a chart like you saw before. So um, find the probability of rolling at most, remember that word, that phrase at most for and flipping heads. And then for number five, you had three nickels. And you want to find the probability of flipping at least two tails when you flip three nickels. So think about a tree um, or uh, some other diagram, um, a table diagram or something else that you can use, a tree or table probably. Um, and I would go with a tree diagram. That, that's how I would do it to figure out what all the outcomes would be, and then find the outcomes where you see at least two tails. And then for number six, it tells you, hey, you roll two number cubes, two six-sided dice. What's the probability of rolling double threes? So that means I roll the dice, and on the first dice I get a three, and in the second dice I get a three. What's the probability of that? And then example one, what is the probability of choosing a stuffed crust Hawaiian pizza? So I can go all the way back up here, stuffed crust Hawaiian pizza. And so I have a stuffed crust Hawaiian pizza right here. So there's one choice for that. How many outcomes are there? There's eight. So there's the answer to that one. We can do that one, we'll fill this one in. All right, for number seven, the probability of choosing that pizza, I'll just call it pizza, is one out of eight, okay? And I believe that that is 12 and a half percent. Just say one divided by eight, and you get 12.5 percent. So you have the answer to that. So you have three problems that I want you to work out. So I'm gonna pause the video here, and when we come back, um, we'll go over the answers. Okay, so we're back. And let's see what we got. For number four, the probability of rolling at most four and flipping heads. So rolling at most four means that I need to roll less something less than or equal to four and flip a heads okay so on my chart here all i do is color in um, rolling a four or less would be all of these that i highlighted and flipping a head so one head two head three head four head so there's four out of 12 which gives me one third or that's approximately 33 percent All right, number five, there's my three nickels, at least two tails. So I drew my tree diagram. And is this for three nickels? No, it is not. And actually, what am I thinking? It is for three nickels. So here's my first nickel. This would be the second one. And this would be the third one. So um, I could get a heads or tails on the first one, heads or tails on the second, heads or tails on the third. 
So these are my results. And I don't want to highlight that one. And you can see here, getting at least two tails, I look at my outcomes and see where do I see at least two tails. And I have to include this last one down here because that's at least two tails, right? Three tails is at least two tails. So I include that one there. So there are one, two, three, four out of eight, which gives me a probability of 50% or one half. And then number six, I did this two ways. The easy way would be to say, you know what? Um, there are six outcomes for rolling one dice and six outcomes for rolling the second. So there's 36 different outcomes. And rolling a three and then a three, well, there's only one place that that happens right here. So it's one out of 36. Notice that the other way I did it was to go ahead and just list. Here are all the different outcomes. There's 36 of them. And you can see the one I highlighted is the one um, that we want for our probability. So that's one out of 36, which is about 2.7 repeating or approximately 3%. And then finally, we did this one with our stuffed crust Hawaiian pizza. You got one out of eight um, choices or outcomes that gives you that type of pizza. And we get 12.5%. So that's it for this video. Hopefully that was helpful. Sorry it was a little long. This is Mr. Odom, and I got to get out.